Looking for magic cards? Shop at Flipside Gaming using promo code LVD or find them on TCG Player through my affiliate link. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a Menace Tribal deck featuring Labyrinth Raptor as a 2 mana 2-2 two -two Nightmare Dinosaur with Menace, saying whenever a creature we control with Menace becomes blocked, defending player has to sacrifice a creature blocking it, so this will happen before damage, but the opponent is the one choosing which creature to sacrifice, so they can potentially still set up reasonable blocks if they like have a very small creature, like a token, and then a very large creature they can block with, they can double block and then sacrifice the 1-1 one -one token and then still potentially kill our menace creature. But as long as the opponent's creatures are roughly the same size as our menace creatures, we'll have a pretty good time. And then for a black and a red, creatures we control with menace get plus one plus so until end of turn. So nice anthem effect for most of the creatures in our deck, because of course we are a menace tribal deck, so almost every creature in the deck will have menace. So this also makes for a nice uh, mana sink in the late game. And then looking at some of the other payoff cards for playing this Menace deck, we have two copies of the Sonorous Halbonder as a 3 mana 2 2 human warrior with Menace, saying each creature we control with Menace can be blocked except by three or more creatures, which uh, roughly translates into all our Menace creatures becoming unblockable, because they'll need uh, quite a few blockers to be able to block our team. And then we have Tentative Connection, which normally costs 4 mana to gain control of target creature until end of turn, untap it, and it gains haste. But if we control a creature with Menace, it costs 3 generic mana less to cast, so now we're just paying a single red mana for this Act of Treason effect, which can definitely swing a, a race in our favor, and also combos very nicely with our Dreadmalkin, which we kind of want to be playing anyway as a 1-drop with Menace, but it can also, for 2 and a black, sacrifice another creature or planeswalker to put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. So if we combine this with a tentative connection, we can for 1 mana steal the opponent's creature, maybe attack with it, and then before the opponent gains control back of their creature, we can sacrifice it to the Dreadmalkin to get those 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters and essentially kill the opponent's creature. So that's a pretty nice combo. And then another nice angle of this deck is the Pestilent Spirit plus Blazing Volley combo, which uh, Pestilent Spirit already a reasonable creature to be playing in a Menace Aggro deck, as a 3 mana 3 2 Spirit with Menace and Death Touch. But it also says instant and sorcery spells we control have Death Touch, which is a very powerful combo with Blazing Volley, which for a single red mana deals 1 damage to each creature or opponent's control. So now instead of dealing 1 damage, we deal 1 Death Touch damage, which results in a one sided board sweeper for just a single single red mana, so a very powerful two card combo, and of course even without the Pestilent Spirit, Blazing Volley can every now and then still put in some work, can even kill a Paradise Druid that normally has Hexproof, doesn't matter if it's uh, tapped or untapped, so it does still have some applications, especially against token decks, thinking of the cycling deck that can go off with the Valiant Rescuer making a bunch of 1-1 humans, Blazing Volley is still very useful, so it's still somewhat reasonable without the Pestilent Spirit, but of course the reason we're playing it is is mainly for the two card combo. And then the glue that holds the entire deck together is Stormfist Crusader as a 2 mana 2 2 human knight with menace saying at the beginning of our upkeep each player draws a card and loses one life. So this will help us draw into these two card combos like Pestilent Spirit plus Blazing Folly or the Dreadmalkin plus Tentative Connection. It also just uh, puts on a clock on the opponent dealing one extra damage each turn and hopefully it doesn't matter that the opponent's drawing extra cards if we can kill them or just set up these powerful two card combos to undo all their progress. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck, which cards haven't we covered yet. So we've got uh, Dreadmalkin at 1 mana alongside Knight of the Abel Legion, which is the only creature in a deck without menace, but it's still just a very powerful 1-drop, we're an aggressive deck, so we do want to be curving out, and this can pick up some plus 1 plus 1 counters along the way, nice powerful activated ability as well for 2 and a black. Then we've got our Blazing Volley, then a 2 mana Labyrinth Raptor and Stormfist Crusader, alongside two copies of Chandra's Pyrohelix, which also combos nicely with the Pestilent Spirit, dealing two damage divided as we choose among one or two targets, so we can potentially kill two creatures if we give this Death Touch, and it's still a little bit better than the Blazing Volley if we're not actually uh, controlling a Pestilent Spirit as potentially just a 2 mana, 2 damage removal spell. And then at 3 mana we've got our Pestilent Spirits, as well as Hunted Nightmare, which is the final creature we haven't covered yet, as a 3 mana 4-5 Nightmare with Menace, but it does come with a drawback, because when the Nightmare enters a battlefield, target opponent puts a Death Touch counter on a creature they control. So if they do have multiple blockers out, they can kind of ensure that they can block and kill the Nightmare, 
but between all the removal spells with Pestilent Spirit and the tentative connection stealing away a blocker, we can usually make it very difficult for the opponent to actually get any use out of their Death Touch creature. And then taking a look at our mana base, we're playing 24 lands, which might seem like a bit much in an aggressive low curve deck like this, but we do want to make sure we can cast our 3 drops on curve, and we also have some nice activated abilities between the Labyrinth Raptor, the Dreadmalkin, and the Knight of the Ebon Legion, so we still have some places to spend all that mana in the late game, and then we also have two copies of Castle Lochthwain as another card draw engine in the late game, alongside 8 Swamps, 8 Mountains for Blood Crypt, and 2 Fabled Passage for a bit of additional mana fixing. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Numori deck, and... This hand could really use a uh, Pestle and Spirits, but we've got a Stormfist Crusader, so maybe we can draw into it. And against a Numori all-creature deck, if we can pull off the Pestle and Spirit Blazing Volley combo, we should be in the clear. So we'll uh, give this a try. Knight of the Evil Legion shows up a turn late. Paradise Druid I can potentially still kill with the Blazing Volley. So I could play Blazing Volley and then double Knights of the Evil Legion, although they won't pick up any plus one plus one counters since we're one damage short. But it might still be worth it here to slow the opponent down. And then we still have the Pyrohelix if we draw a Pestilent Spirit later. Polywalk Symbiotes. Alright, there's a Pestilent Spirit. So this turn I can attack with everyone and uh, take it from there. Opponent takes it, no pump. And then I don't have to play Pass on Spirit this turn, I could play the Nightmare instead, but then I wouldn't be able to play Knight. So this still seems more mana efficient. All the knights pick up a counter, and our point's pretty far behind. Opponent just has to pass, maybe has like the shore shark they can flash in here. We even have the blazing volley to combo with the spirits. Just gonna move to combat, attack with everyone, and we'll see what happens. Sure. Yep, yeah, there's a shark. So we'll let that happen. Opponent attempts to bound spirits in response. I'll go one and one. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Lurus deck. This hand's acceptable. We've got a fine curve of Dreadmalkin into Crusader into Nightmare. And then we're hoping to draw into Tentative Connection to combo with the Dreadmalkin. Opponent appears to be on a cycling deck. So we gotta kill them before they kill us with a giant zenith flare, pretty much. Alright, there's a connection to go with our Dreadmalkins. So perhaps next turn we can steal the Dranith Healer. Ooh, 
Ooh, pass on spirits, so we're just a blazing volley away from clearing the opponent's board. But uh, this turn I still like Connection Steel Healer, because I think we're the aggressor in the matchup right now at least. So we just want to prevent them gaining life as opposed to preventing damage from the Stinger. Ah, they decide to take it, that's fine. Alright, opponent's digging desperately. But they seem pretty dead. Alright, sweet. Managed to beat the cycling deck. On to the next one. Yeah, that was alright. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Jiruda deck. So the Blazing Volley Pestle and Spirit combo is very important in this matchup especially. Don't have the Pestle and Spirit yet, but we do have Crusader which can maybe draw us into one. Black Mana for the Nightmare would also be nice. Sphinx of Foresight, right? That's a new one. Haven't seen that uh, in Geruda decks before. And Blazing Volley could maybe also kill a Paradise Druid, which most Geruda decks also play. So if they do have Paradise Druid, I could go Blazing Volley plus Play Rapture. It's gonna be a Leafkin Druid instead. Alright, and there's Pestle and Spirit, excellent. Probably still the play, because I can't play my Nightmare. But I probably want to wait with the Blazing Volley until they actually play Geruda. Although if they have Kogla to fight Spirits, I guess Kogla would die as well in the fight because of Death Touch, so maybe they won't. We'll see. This looks like a Wolf Willow Haven. Into another Wolf Willow Haven. Alright, there's my black mana, so I can go double a Labyrinth Raptor this turn. Seems fine. And then next turn, hopefully Blazing Volley can seal the deal. They hit their uh, Sphinx. They also got to see a small preview here with the Blazing Volley in my graveyards. And we can pump with the uh, Labyrinth Raptors for the win. Alright, sweet. Beating Giruda always feels nice. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a pretty decent hand. Being on the play definitely always a nice feeling when playing an aggressive deck. Although unlike most aggro decks that uh, kind of have to get ahead and stay ahead, we do have a little bit of comeback potential with the Pestle and Spirit combo. Red, green, and Paradise Root, so even just drawing a Blazing Volley and casting it would be fine here. But I'm kind of liking the Nightmare this turn. And 
And if they ramp into a big creature, we've got a connection to steal it and maybe sack to the Dreadmalkin if we draw land. And Gruul Spellbreaker. Perfect victim here. Attack. And our point's pretty much dead here. Well, that was fast. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Don't love this hand. Don't get to play Knight's turn 1. Missing double black. This is better. We've got the Spirit's Blazing Volley combo. We've got a Knight. So the question is, do we keep the third land or do we keep the second Knight? Hmm. Bottoming the land might be a little bit too greedy, but we're on the draw, so... I do get an extra draw step at finding a land as well. I'll try this. There's also a world where we put Mountain on the bottom instead of Swamp. Turn to Paradise Roots. So yeah, I could just Blazing Volley play Knight, but... I think I'm gonna be patient and hold Volley to combo with the Spirit instead. So far, our decision to bottom the lands doesn't seem to be paying off, but you never know. Prime Speaker Vanifar. Alright, so this is the Vanifar combo deck. Yeah, and we drew another knight instead of a land. So next turn they could play Vanifar, and the turn after they could potentially combo off and kill us. And I'm not gonna have enough time to play Spirit and Volley, even if we draw a land next turn. So that probably means I'm forced to volley this turn. Which is not what I wanted, but here we are. Pyrohelix could be fine too. I don't even get to attack with my knights this turn, which is a little sad. Yeah, not uh, drawing a third land was definitely a pretty big setback. So I guess we'll just sit with the raptor, play another one. So they can get their Nightmare Shepherd. Do they have a Corridor Monitor in hand? They do. So they should be able to just combo off and kill me here, if I'm not mistaken.
I think our opponent's just about ready to get the Grey Merchants to drain us out. Grey Merchant for 10, can sack it to the Strider and drain us for 10 once again. If you were confused about what just happened, then uh, you can always check out my uh, Vanifar pod video that I made a couple months ago, which covers that deck. But uh, yeah, our decision of bottoming the land did not pan out, otherwise we do get to play the Pestilent Spirits and Blazing Volley the Vanifar, and then uh, they never get to combo off. But so it goes, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play once again, facing a Numori deck, and we've got a fine hand. A drawing Crusader almost every game also doesn't uh, hurt. There's definitely an argument for playing the Dreadmalkin first. Ooh, Mamba. That's an interesting twist. If they can mutate onto that, we could be in trouble. If they go like Blue Source into Parcel Beasts instead of Paradise Druid, so. Blazing Volley would look pretty good here. Still fine attacking with both. And then the Knight will pick up a plus one plus one counter. And we're probably gonna lose the Pestilent Spirits to the Mamba this turn. But we've got a backup spirit in case we draw a Blazing Volley. Second Mamba. Now what? Knight of Ebon Legion could attack, they could block and trade. Could just play Dreadmalkin, and then if they kill the Stormfist Crusader with the Mamba, I can just sack it to the Dreadmalkin to get a bit of value. I could just play the Halbonder so the Stormfist can attack freely. Play a Dreadmalkin. Really want to keep Spirit in case we draw Volley so we can play Spirit and Volley in the same turn. I think I'm leaning Dreadmalkin. Just keep up three mana this turn. Probably still get a swamp. I'm gonna need to find a blazing volley or at least a uh, Chandra Sparrow Helix soon here. Alright, there's a Power Helix. So, play Spirits. And now the Halbonder makes sure we can keep attacking with our Menace Creatures. It's gonna bounce a Knight, but that one's pretty cheap to replay. And our opponent's trying to race. More Spirits. So I don't think I can kill my opponent here. I could deal 8 damage if we play Knight and sack it to the Dreadmalkin. It's not quite enough. I guess we'll just play double 3 drop then. Alright, Hemophage. It's gonna drain us a little bit. Bounce the spirits. Put him back up to six.
And a Boneyard Lurker is gonna drain us. They have to bounce a Dreadmalkin. I guess they're back up to seven, so... Yeah, they could still survive here. Never mind. All right. This was a much more interactive and close game thanks to those Mombas threatening to kill my creatures. But uh, luckily still managed to pull off Spirit plus Pyrohelix, which is great against any creature deck. On to the next one. We're on the play, facing a Lurus deck, and we've got a fine opening hand. We've got both the Dreadmalkin in case we draw the connection, and the Blazing Volley in case we draw Pestilence Spirit, so both of those would be fine additions. And looks like we can't escape the cycling decks. Alright, there's Spirit, so... We've got uh, the Wombo Combo in hand. Double Fox, sure. Tentative Connection could be nice. So we've got options. I could just play Spirits, which if they don't kill it, I can uh, set up the combo next turn. Although there is a chance that they go for blood to fight, but that would still result in a trade, so that doesn't seem likely to happen. So I think the simplest uh, play is just to play Spirits. Because if I don't draw land next turn, I wouldn't necessarily be able to Spirit plus Blazing Volley. Opponent cycles. Alright, so don't need to fear the gopher blood. Now, if I take 10 damage here, I'm dead to a Zenith Flare next turn. And I'm not going to be dealing lethal myself. So now we got to do some math. Let's say I trade. But I guess I can just take 10 and then tentative connection. I would be dealing 5, 6... 11. Hmm, so I'm a little bit short of killing them with my tentative connection here. But if I take 10, I'm dead to Zenith Flare. If I trade and only take 5, I go to 10. Let's say I draw land so I can tentative connection plus use Dreadmalkin. Does that put me in a better spot? Because if I take 5, that goes to the graveyard. I'm not necessarily dead to a Zenith Flare next turn, although it would still be bad for me. So maybe the play is to just trade. And then a land for a connection would still be good. Because then I can uh, sack it to the Dreadmalkin. More Blazing Volleys. So we'll steal the Fox. Attack. So now at least we have a chance against Zenith Flare. And our opponent's still pretty far behind on board. If they try to go wide with the Rescuer to make some blockers against Menace, we have got the Blazing Volley. So Volley does kind of combo nicely with Menace in a sense, because it helps you against tokens. It's just gonna flare our face. Down to two we go. And uh, yeah, don't have the red mana. If I had red mana, I could play Raptor, pump the team, but I would still be short of killing them. So we're definitely dead if they have another flare, but not much we can do there. So I guess my play is just to five. Yeah, I could also play Knight, sack it to the Dreadmalkin, but we're still short. So best I can do is probably 
play raptor, play knights. And hope they don't have another Zenith Flare. Stinger will also do it, because we're gonna take one damage from our own Crusader. Could have maybe sacked it to the Dreadmalkin, but they probably have two Cyclers anyway, so... That didn't matter too much. Alright, GG's. Well, we had to kind of change course from the... Uh, Pass on Spirit Plan, just because those foxes otherwise would have dealt a little bit too much damage. But, uh, yeah, we tried our best to play around Flare, but in the end it was still just enough to get them out of range and uh, kill us with a Stinger instead. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand's not amazing. Turn to Raptor. We've got Parahelix in case we draw... Pass on Spirit, Connection in case we find Red Malkins. Hmm, I'll try it, but it's not amazing. Let's get our Swamp. So our castle comes into play untapped. Alright, there's a Dreadmalkin to go with connection. So next turn I can play the Dreadmalkin, maybe Pyrohelix somewhere. I've got a lot of connections. Um, guess I'll just pump with a Raptor instead. Risen Reef, also a nice target for Pyrohelix, potentially. Think I want to steal the Risen Reef here. Instead of using Pyrohelix, because it's a bit more mana efficient to then also use Dreadmalkin. Or I could Pyrohelix and then pump with a Raptor, which is also reasonable. But I do gotta start using these connections since I have so many of them. Cavalier of Gales. Alright, it's a fine target for connection as well. Opponent's probably going to be tempted to keep both blockers back to try and double block my menace creatures. But it also kind of plays into our favor. As they wouldn't be dealing us any damage in the race when they actually wouldn't be able to block. Let's see, can I kill them if I connection the Guard Mage? 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, I guess they're just dead. That works too. Alright, sweet. So your opponent was probably on uh, some sort of Thassa Blink deck uh, featuring Night of Autumn on the splash. Alright, so got to see quite a bit of our Menace Tribal deck in action. Got to see the Tentative Connection plus Dreadmalkin, as well as the Pestilent Spirit plus Blazing Volley. So both of those combos being pretty powerful two-card combos that we can draw into thanks to the Stormfist Crusader. 
which kind of holds the entire deck together. So yeah, as always, being on the play, a very big deal in best of one. Definitely uh, see pretty big disparity between win percentages when going first. But still, like I said, the deck does have a bit of comeback potential thanks to that Pestilence Spirit Blazing Volley combo, which uh, most aggro decks don't really have. So yeah, that's going to be it for me today. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.